Muling pagbati sa inyo mga kapatid sa pangalan ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Tayo ay magpapatuloy ng ating pag-aaral sa paksang Christian Holiness sa ating Sunday School at tayo ay nasa bahagi na pinag-aaralan natin ang Standards of Holiness at muli nating panariwain na ang Standard of Holiness ay napakahalaga because it defines for us what sin or what holiness is at kung ano ang standard na yon ay walang iba kundi ang Diyos mismo, God Himself as Holy is our supreme standard but what when do we know that What we are following is in accord with God's holiness. Binigyan tayo ng mga pamantayan na depenido at maari nating matarget. At yun ang mga pinag-aaralan natin ngayon. Natapos na tayo sa Ten Commandments, gayon din sa Kingdom of Christ at sa Example of Jesus. Nasa bahagi tayo ngayon ng pag-aaral ng Fruit of the Spirit. At napakalagang ilagay natin ito so itutong natin sa ating paniniwala sa pagkatrinidad ng Diyos. So in the triune God, each person has his role at nilagay ko sa diagram pagdating sa usapin ng kaligtasan, bawat persona ay may kanyang ginawa o papel sa gawain iyon. The Father is the one who planned and purposed in eternity and then the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished whatever the Father planned and purposed in eternity, the Son accomplished in eternity. History and that's the death and resurrection of Jesus. And as far as the Holy Spirit is concerned, He is the one applying it to the experience of those whom God has planned and purpose to save. Kaya ang interes natin ngayon ay na sa gawain ng banal na espirito. What is the Holy Spirit's work in redemption? Ma kakategorya natin ito sa tatlo. There is conviction of sin of one who still is outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is regeneration with life with someone who he is now bringing to response to the gospel by faith and repentance. Na una ang regeneration. Ang interest natin ay ang ikatlo kung saan nagpapatuloy ang gawa ng Espiritu sa isang mana ng palataya na at tinatawag natin ito na the sanctification of graces. At pagdating sa tinatawag na fruit of the Spirit, no text probably is more popular and more uh, key to our understanding of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22 and 23. At paniluan ko ng konteksto nito na kasalungat ng mga legalismo at ang sinasabi ni Pablo, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such things there is no law. At uh, pagbalik-aralan lamang natin, ang sinabi natin dito, it is a singular fruit. It's not fruits but fruit. And that means that they are not separate graces. However, there can be degrees for each of the graces. Kaya't magandang malaman mo kung anong biyaya ka lumalago sa ang biyaya ka nagkukulang para doon ka magbigay ng konsentrasyon sa iyong pagpapakabanal. And then, it is spiritual fruit. And by spiritual fruit, I mean it is from the Holy Spirit. That's why we need to distinguish this from other forms of virtues that are merely creaturely or natural. May mga tao na may angking mga ugali na parang kamukha ng mga biyayang binanggit dito ni Pablo pero hindi ito ang bunga ng Espiritu. When we talk of the fruit of the Spirit, this can only be true of believers. At kanya natin tingnan ang mga biyayang ito para ito sa kabanalan ng mga mana ng palataya. Then we try to relate the various graces. There are nine in all mentioned in Galatians 5:22 and 23. How are they related? And the popular way of relating them is to see three sets of trilogy. That is because there are nine. Hinati sa tatlo na tigatlong mga biyaya. I have another take on that, and I already suggested that it is like a funnel where love is the funnel out of which flows. The other graces at ang mga graces na yon hinati ko sa tigalawa, joy and peace, and then you have patience and kindness, and you have goodness and faithfulness, and then gentleness and self-control. Paano natin ikakategorya ang mga biyayang ito? 
we looked at last week at Joy and Peace and I said that these are graces for varying situations, particularly situations that may not be welcome to the believer but their joy and peace can still reign. At ang titingnan natin ngayon ay ang patience and kindness as graces for general relations. We will be looking at goodness and faithfulness which are graces for covenant fellowship and then Gen uh, gentleness and self-control as graces for adversarial control. Now, what I can see as going for this kind of structure is that it maintains that love is the first. Hindi aksidente na inuna ang pag-ibig sapagkat ito ang motivasyon ng lahat ng mga biyayang binanggit dito. Love is motivational for all Christian graces and duties and that is why we began our study with the grace of love as root of all the other graces and I gave the common denominator of love as willing gift of oneself for the good of the object and as depending on the object there will be different good of the object as we love that object as far as God is concerned love to God means seeking his glory love of brethren means seeking their holiness and love of our fellow men <coughs> or love of sinners I should say means seeking their salvation so dyan natin nakita ang pagiging ugat ng pag-ibig sa lahat ng mga biyaya tinignan natin ito sa unang uh, bahagi ng graces of varying situations, joy and peace today we look at the graces for general relations which are patience and kindness so we begin with a grace for general relations as that of patience and again we need to distinguish this from what is merely natural and creaturely rather than fruit of the spirit so we need to distinguish patience from natural tolerance may mga tao na natural lang sa kanilang mas maging mahinahon mapagpigil at uh, mapagparaya eh, hindi na nangahulugan ito ay bunga ng espiritu maari ito ay likas lang sa kanila maari din na bunga ng tinatawag nating common grace mga biyaya ng Diyos na hindi pa para sa kaligtasan kaya hindi ito para sa mga mana ng palataya and as far as the word patience is concerned used in Galatians the Greek word denotes slow to anger marahan sa galit kaya nga sa ibang translation the older translations use long suffering uh, one who suffers long that is he suffers the a provocation of someone and does not immediately respond in ang anger and that is long suffering and this is where it is distinct from tolerance you see tolerance may restrain but inwardly it resents and there is a graphic portrayal of this in the wisdom book of proverbs concerning anger that is kept within ang sabi sa Proverbs 17:14 starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam so drop the matter before a dispute breaks out eh ang pag uh, pagkaroon ng naglik sa dam paunti-unti lang patak-patak sa una Pero kapag ito ay lumaki na ng lumaki, biglang sasabog at alam natin ang kalimidad na idinudulot nito. Kaya yan ang tolerance. A person may be tolerant but inwardly resentful and that is why it is not the fruit of the Spirit. Iba ang bunga ng Espiritu. What is the denominator of gracious patience? And again, we root it in love. Love is the motive of gracious patience. Kaya pag sinabi natin gracious patience, hindi ibig sabihin na kailanman hindi nagagalit, kundi ang pag-ibig ang siyang may control sa kanyang galit man o pagpapahinuhod, maliwanag sa Biblia na hindi lahat ng galit ay kasalanan. Pamilyar tayo sa Ephesians 4, 26 and 27, be angry. And do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. So there is a way of being angry without sinning uh, in terms of how you express it as well as in terms of how long 
you nurse that anger, eh, dyan tayo masusubok sa ating pagpapahinuhod. So, one thing that we can say of patience, insofar as it means slow to anger at its root, it means control of anger. Love will either restrain or direct anger for what is good. So, that is how love controls. Kaya tingnan natin that our patience is in conformity with God's patience and God is described as slow to anger. Uh, marahan siya sa kanyang galit o sa kanyang puot. And he is called the God of patience in Romans 15 uh, as a motivation to the way Christians should deal with one another, especially in matters of liberty. Uh, Paul advances the motive of who God is. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded uh, one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So here we see that as far as anger is concerned, God's anger is just. And whenever He expresses that, expresses that anger in whatever way, that anger is just. But here we see that though God's anger is just, He controls. He does not simply vent. Ibig sabihin, hindi niya lang basta sinasabog ang kanyang galit, kundi mas pinipili niya ang control sa kanyang galit sapagkat ang kanyang kalooban ay namamayani sa anumang mayroon siya na galit o puot. At ganyan dapat ang control din ng mana ng palataya sa kanyang nararamdaman na galit. Patience is the grace that controls anger. Now, when we say control anger, it means you decide in which direction that anger will go. And there are two directions. One is confront and the other is restrain. Now, there can be two extremes. One extreme is never restraining and the other is never confronting. Now, when you never restrain a person without restraint, basta naramdaman niyang galit siya, isasabog siya sa galit, ayan ang tao na tinawag sa Biblia na a man given to anger. And what are we to do with a man given to anger? Proverbs 22:24 says, Do not associate with a man given to anger, or go with a hot-tempered man, or you will learn his ways and find a snare for yourself. Para kang gumagawa ng patibong sa sarili mo kapag ang kaibigan mong malapit ay magagalitin, hindi makapagpigil ng kanyang galit. Yan ang isang extreme. In a person who has no control of anger is he does not restrain. He just vents his anger. But the other extreme is also manifesting lack of control of anger in the sense that he never confronts. And without confrontation, what do you call a person who never confronts another who perhaps has done something that should rightly make him angry, like a parent to a child, or between friends, or between brethren, eh, kung lagi na lang sinasabi niya, iwasan ko na lang, eh, this is a man without moral principle. And the Bible says that uh, here, the Apostle Paul mentions the two faces of true love. For one who serves others, what do you desire? He says, shall I come to you with a rod or with love in a spirit of gentleness? Now, he's not saying that using the rod, which in this case may be rebuke or even censure, he is not saying na walang love kapag gumamit siya ng rod. Kundi it's just one manifestation of love. The other and the more common is the spirit of gentleness. Apostle Paul is one man who would rather avoid using sheer authority in matters that he can uh, get through gentle means. But it does not mean that he is not able to use the rod when necessary. So you have these two ways of controlling your anger and love is the one that directs which one is for good. Whether restraining it or confronting the cause of anger. Now, here is one sin that we should avoid that is often 
the opposite of patience and that is judgmental fault finding judgmental fault finding represses patience uh, sinusupil niya ng pagpapahinuhod at na, kung ito man ay itago mo o kaya ipakita mo pareho lang kung ikaw ay mapanghusga ang sabi ng Panginoon dyan sa Matthew 7 do not, uh, judge not that you be not judged why do you judge a brother's speck in the eye when you have your plank in your own eye it's exaggerated but the point is that you have a bigger problem moral issue and yet you see the punctilious and small matters in others that's judgmentalism that's fault finding and a person with that kind of behavior or attitude will never be patient so when it comes to patience here is a real challenge and that is ministry to people with annoying character yung nakakainis na mga ugali na mga tao eh, meron yan sa mga komunidad tayo sa opisina sa tahanan o maging sa iglesia nandiyan ang mga taong ma, ma, madaling maka uh, udyok sa iyo sa pagkagalit o pagkainis but when you serve and when you choose to minister to such people that is a challenge of patience and there is no better example on this than the Lord Jesus himself look at the way he dealt with his disciples in the period of their immaturity just take a case of Peter he told Peter on the night that he was going to be arrested, that is Jesus was going to be arrested, uh, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Napakagandang pananalita ng Panginoon para kay Peter, and guess how Peter reacted to this? Well, verse 33 says, Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. So, you can imagine how uh, in human terms this was annoying to Jesus after he has told Peter his perilous condition under Satan's temptation. Eh, ito pa ang kanyang pagyayabang na ginawa. And yet, he did not turn his back to Peter at siya ang nagpanumbalik para sa isang nakulog na kanyang alagad. So this is the example and this becomes an exhortation for all believers to emulate in the way we treat people in the church especially who have varying problems of character. Sinabi ng 1 Thessalonians 5.14 And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive encourage the disheartened help the weak be patient with everyone so sari-saring mga character problem ang binanggit dito yung mga hindi mapagpasakop ang mga nanghihina mga nang lulupaypay pero sinabi with everyone dahil may kanya-kanya tayong mga kahinaan uh, we need patience with each other and that patience will express itself in forbearance pagpapahinuhod this is a function of patience and why do we need to forbear with one another well for two reasons one is we are of different levels of maturity pagdating sa kaalaman pagdating sa maturidad magkakaiba tayo at hindi natin dapat na ipilit ang isang wala pa ng maturidad na mayroon tayo na maging katulad natin sa maturidad. So, we see this in Jesus again, in His uh, sensitivity to the capacity of the disciples, even in absorbing what could be mature teaching. He said in John 16, 12, which is part of the upper room discourse, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Sa makatuwid nagpipigil si Jesus ng gusto niyang sabihin at ituro sapagkat sa pagkakataong iyon hindi pa kakayanin ng kanyang mga alagad kasama yan sa pasensya sa pagpapahinuhod ng pag-ibig 
na kahit gustong gusto mo na dapat alam na niya pero hindi niya alam huwag mong ipilit sapagkat magkakaiba tayo ng antas ng kaalaman at ng maturidad and that is also because there is a variety of strength or weakness when it comes to conscience in matters of liberty sa mga bagay na may kinalaman sa kalayaan ng kristyano, hindi lahat ay nakakaalam ng ganung kalayaang mayroon tayo at maari silang matalisod uh, sa nakikita nilang ginagawa natin na walang pagsasaalang-alang sa damdami ng maaring mahina sa kanyang konsensya. Ito ang tinutukoy ni Pablo nang sabihin niya sa Romans 15 na we who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak. Nung strong and weak dito ay hindi strong and weak in terms ng knowledge or in terms of experience but in terms of conscience. So, merong strong in conscience which means they can do matters of liberty without feeling guilty about it. The weak are those who cannot do certain things without feeling guilty about those things because of their past experience or background at ang sinabi ni Pablo Rian ay magpahinuhod kayo sa isa't isa magtanggapan kayo sa isa't isa at huwag niyong isipin lang ang nakakalugod sa inyong sarili let each please his neighbor for his good to build him up so this is one function of patience and real challenge is forbearance and ministry to people who may annoy you or provoke you in terms of anger. So, where there is disregard for spiritual state of others, it betrays impatience. And again, this is what Paul has in mind when he warns of uh, those people who may know the basic of the Christian belief that there is only one God and idols are not true gods. But then he follows in 1 Corinthians 8-7, Not everyone possesses that knowledge. Some have just converted from idolatry and para sa kanila, the idols that they left behind were real gods but only weaker or inferior gods compared to the God of Israel. So they have, they have not reached yet the understanding that there is no real existence to these gods. Yan ay isa lang alang dapat ng mga maaring mas may kaalaman at kung hindi mo isinasaalang alang yon it is it betrays lack of patience. So tignan natin ang kilawang biyaya. One other grace for general relations is kindness. Kindness again to distinguish this from what is merely natural or creaturely, it is distinct from just being nice. Yung mga mabuti kang makisama, mabait kang ituring. Uh, hindi yan ang kindness, kabutihang loob, kagandahang loob ng isang mana ng palataya na may bunga ng espiritu. And we will note that these two, patience and kindness, are put together in several instances. I'll just cite the love chapter of 1 Corinthians 13.4. Take note that the first two positive is love is patient, love is kind. So where love is exercised and demonstrated in any human relationship, these are the two positive factors or positive graces that should be uh, active, uh, patient and kind. And now, Unbelievers may show some kind of kindness as Paul observed of the people of Malta in Acts 28. Nung sila ay nagkaroon ng shipwreck, napadpad sila sa Malta. Ang sabi ni Apostle Paul, the inhabitants of the land treated us with special kindness. So we recognize that kindness can be the product of common grace but we still need to distinguish and differentiate this from kindness as fruit of the Spirit. And again, the denominator of gracious kindness is disposition to seek the welfare of others, but again, dictated by love, love that is born of the uh, regenerating work of the Holy Spirit. And Paul 
recognizes this of the Philippians in Philippians 4:14 following yet it was kind of you to share my trouble and you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel when I left Macedonia no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only even in Thessalonica you sent me help for my needs once again once and again not that I seek the gift but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit or to your account. Now again, here you see the kindness is something that springs from the appreciation of one's gospel favor. Nakinaburan sila ng ebanghelyo ng Diyos, kaya ang trato nila sa mga katulad ni Pablo ay ang kagandahang loob, kindness, and that is why it is fruit of the Spirit and not merely that of being naturally nice to people. In fact, observe here that Apostle Paul describes kindness as partnership in giving and receiving. Ang point yan ay, they receive the gospel. And because they receive the gospel through the ministry of the Apostle Paul, and we know of that in the narrative in Acts with the conversion of Lydia, the Philippian jailer, Lydia, the first converts of uh, the ministry in Philippi. So they were recipients of the gospel. Now in return, they are being kind. So kindness here is the result. Uh, springing from that of gospel favor. That is why it's not just being nice, but it is the fruit of the Spirit. And then, let us consider the divine model of kindness. God's kindness is distributed to all. We see this in Luke 6.35. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend, them, lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. At sa background niyan, sinabi na nagpapadala ang Panginoon ng kanyang pagsikat ng araw, pagbibigay ng ulan, mga lahat ng kailangan, at hindi niya pinipili kung sino lang ang bibigyan niya na may magandang damdamin o kalooban sa kanya. God's kind provisions do not discriminate on people's responsiveness. He mentions here the unthankful. Uh, God uh, is distributing. At may mga tao na tumatanggap sa Diyos at gagamitin nila yung tinanggap nila sa Diyos para lapastanganin ang Diyos. Pero hindi tumitigil ang pagpapala ng Diyos sa kanila, sa kanilang mga normal na kapangangailangan. Ganyan ang kagandang, kagandahang loob ng Diyos. Kaya Ito ang uri ng kagandahang loob din ang gawin natin. Pero tandaan natin, ang kagandahang loob na yan, while indiscriminate as to the responsiveness, yet it has the goal of making people responsive to God. Do you despise the riches of His kindness, restraint, and patience? There you have the two put together again. Kindness and patience. Not recognizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance. So, as to the uh, facts that God is distributing His favors of natural gifts indiscriminate of responsiveness, but it has the intention of making people respond with repentance. So God's kindness seeks to bring beneficiaries to repentance and thankfulness. So avoid for our part being selective in your acts of kindness. If we are to be to have God as our model of kindness, this is God's kindness. Therefore our kindness to people and sometimes we meet people who are nasty in character, sometimes unthankful, but how does God deal with such people? So we must be kind even to such people. And the Christian duty of kindness now extends to his fellow men. Again, as, a, as an emulation of who God is and what kind of kindness God distributes to his creatures, so the Christian duty of kindness should emulate. At sa Titus chapter 3, sinabi ang uri ng mga anyo ng 
kagandahang loob sa iba't ibang uri ng tao, sa mga namamahala, sa mga kapwa-tao, pero nakaugat ito sa paunang kagandahang loob na ibinigay ng Diyos. Titus 3.3 For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that the kindness and Love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us, etc. So, ang naging turning point para sa mana ng palataya, kaya sa nagiging maganda ang loob sa ibang mga tao, ay dahil tumanggap siya ng, ng kagandahang loob. Nang Dios, that is our duty to our fellow men, mga namamahala, mga kapwa tao, at Christians reciprocate the kindness of God in being kind to others. Is that your kindness to people, not just the naturally being nice, but rather that which is the spiritual fruit of holiness? <coughs> At may sinabi rin sa Colossians 3 verse 12 na ipinapakita naman kung paano ito dapat mamagitan sa mga kapwa, mga mananampalataya. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So, when we speak of kindness, it must have its maximum demonstration in the church. After all, we are a community of people who have all been recipients and beneficiaries of the kindness of God. The kindness that Tita, Paul spoke to Titus about, that is the kindness we receive. So, if we can be kind to our fellow men, we should be all the more kind to one another. That is the Christian duty of kindness. And one thing that that should avoid is ulterior motive. Yung nag, mag, nagmamagandang loob pero merong gustong kapalit. At yan ang sinabing maliwanag ni Jesus. Hindi dapat ang ating kagandahang loob ay bunga ng ikagandahang loob na tinanggap natin, ibahagi natin sa ating kapwa na hindi nagahanap ng personal nating pakinabang at kapalit. Kaya sa pag pagsasabuhay ng mga biyaya ng patience and kindness. Again, nakikipagbaka tayo. May dalawang kaisipan na siyang mga pwersa na naguumpugan at tayo ay dapat na sumunod sa bunga ng espiritu na ang iniisip ay in all my relations the spirit can enable me to be patient and kind. So consider it fruit of the Spirit. It may be against your personality, but it is the fruit of the Spirit. And it will result in the resolve. I will exercise control of my emotion of anger, just patience, and seek the welfare of others. That's kindness. The opposite thought, because of remaining sin, is one who thinks I cannot control my emotion of anger. And I find some people just difficult. So the resulting behavior is I cannot help my eruption of anger and I am not disposed to seek the good of some people. Well, alam natin kung saan tayo nararapat. Bagamat nariyan ang ating nananatiling kasalanan, ang hamon nito sa atin ay in a self-seeking world, let holiness shine in patience and kindness. Nasa mundo tayo na... Masyadong makasarili, hinahanap ang sarili, emosyon man yan, o kabutihan, eh, yung pang sarili, ang inuuna. Well, let holiness shine in patience and kindness, patience in the way we control anger, whether in restraining or confronting for good, or kindness in seeking the welfare of others without ulterior motive, because God has been kind. To us. Kaya't mga kapatid, yan ang ating ipanuri sa ating sarili, mga sarili. Gusto natin ng pagpapakabanal at sa ating buhay dito sa mundo, may mga relasyon tayong lahat. Relasyon sa kapatiran, relasyon sa mga hindi mananampalataya. At sa pangkalahatang relasyon, in general relations, the graces that matter, that will reveal the holiness of the Holy Spirit which bears the fruit of graces is in terms of patience 
and kindness. Kaya sana magsuri tayo at sikapin natin sa pamamagitan ng Espiritu, tayo ay makilala bilang patient and kind to the glory of God. Maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig. Sana kayo nakinabang at pagpalain kayo mula sa pag-ibig ng Diyos, Ama, sa biyaya ng kanyang anak na si Yeso Kristo at sa pakikipisan ng banal na Espiritu.